Okay, so uh, <clears throat> have the head in people, use of multimedia, the fourth lesson. So uh, as I told you, there are four different sections that we have to learn uh, through this lesson, which is the photo editing part, the animating part, video editing and audio editing, right? So first uh, they have focused regarding the, uh, the graphic editing part about the digital graphics, right? Uh, so in the uh, first part of the lesson, they are like introducing you some uh, important components regarding a graphic, right? So uh, these are the things that you need to know about the graphics before you uh, work with it, because uh, in the future, uh, you will be, you, you, you may need these uh, qualities uh, to understand how the picture is going to be edited or how the picture is going to be arranged, right? So due to that, uh, it's better you first understand what are these uh, attributes when it comes to a basic uh, uh, particular uh, graphic, right? So uh, these are the key attributes that we are talking about regarding a digital graphic, which is the pixel resolution, size, and the color, right? So pixel in the sense, as you can see, uh, it can be easily understood by this picture. They have uh, illustrated it very well, right? So when it comes to our computer screen, all the graphics that we can see on the screen is made out of pixels. Pixel is a very smallest, it is the smallest unit that you can see on your screen, just a simple dot, right? So when you zoom it, uh, you can uh, see like uh, what's the dimension or like what kind of a, a thing that we call pixel is, but actually it is being zoomed, right? Even in, in this picture, uh, they have zoomed a very small point of the uh, entire picture, right? Uh, this particular picture says it has been zoomed up to 3,200 percentage, right? So, this So, then we can see a small square or a picture uh, or, or a particular uh, small square that can identify it as a pixel. So, collection of these small squares will give you a better picture, better quality uh, graphic on your screen. And when it comes to the uh, your screen, a number of pixels that can be used in your screen can be different, right? It's when, when your uh, screen size is getting bigger, uh, as well as the screen technology is getting bigger, uh, getting improved, the number of pixels that are using uh, on the screen are getting higher, right? So more pixels in the picture means more quality inside the picture, right? What a uh, picture can uh, pixels quality right? So later you will understand uh, how these things are going to happen. And uh, moreover, they are talking about uh, the things that can be arranged using the pixel. So uh, we tell this our diagrams or, or our, our graphics are being created uh, using a pixel array, right? So you can see what kind of a thing that they call pixel array. So it's, it's kind of a collection of pixels which has, which horizontally and vertically that you can find. Uh, pixels inside it, right? So in this pixel array, there are two rows of pixels and uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five columns of pixels. So like the, when a particular area contains rows and columns of pixels, it is called a pixel array, right? If you take just a row, we call it a pixel row, or if you take just a column, it called a pixel column. Right, so pixel array is made out of collection by collection of a, a number of pixel rows or number of pixel columns, right? So that is what you have to uh, understand first, what it means by a pixel, right? And <clears throat> 
when it comes to the uh, the size or the capacity of a, a pixel, it says the colors that used in the graphic are represented by the number of bits per pixel that you can be used. Right. So uh, now we get to know about that this small square is called a pixel. The number of colors that can be used inside that pixel defines how uh, colorful your picture is going to be, right? So if, if a particular pixel represents just one bit inside it, so it can represent two colors, right? As it shows here, right? So that means zero will be indicate a one particular color, one can be indicate another particular color. So if you, if it, when it comes to the uh, monochrome pictures like black and white or blue and black, black things like if, if you can find only two colors inside it, that means the number of bits which is used inside the pixel is just one, right? So if you got two bits inside a pixel, then you can represent four colors using a particular pixel, right? So likewise, if the number of bits are going to be increased inside a pixel, it has its capability, so it improves its capability of representing many different colors inside it. So when we have three bits inside it, we can represent eight colors. When we have four bits, we can represent 16 colors, right? So this particular relationship is made out of this particular equation. Colors per pixel used can be recognized when we take the number of bits inside a pixel as a two to the power. No, Susu, this is my class. All right, so paper, it shows like when four bits are there in a pixel, it can represent 16 colors, right? So likewise, uh, you can go both the ways, right? So e even there are some questions regarding uh, this kind of uh, equation in your exam paper. Sometimes they will give you the number of colors represented by a pixel. Then they are asking how many bits are there inside a pixel. Or they will give you the number of bits inside a pixel and ask how many colors that it can represent. So what you have to remember is number of bits can be taken as a two to the power. So that value will represent number of colors that you can use. Right, people, is that clear? Yes, everyone, is that clear? Lamai. Ah, right, okay, Risara, thank you. Right, so these pictures indicate how the uh, colors are being uh, uh, spread over a pixel, as you can see. So when you have one bit, only two colors, green and purple, only green and purple is here. When you have four bits, that means 16 colors can be uh, uh, taken. So if you count how many shadings are here, so we will find 16. When it comes to the eight bit, it's two to the power eight. That means 256 colors. When you have 24 bits, two to the power 24, right? So like the uh, this particular 
table shows it's 16.7 million colors. Then you have 32 bits per pixel. It's two to the power 32, right? That means uh, 4,294 million. It's, it's, it's kind of uh, 4.2 billion colors, right? So likewise, uh, it goes uh, when the number of bits are being changed inside a pixel. Okay, so uh, let's write the important stuff regarding a particular graphic. So I think you have done with your heading already. So let's see what we can write. Yeah, you better copy uh, this line under your main heading. Okay, are we done? Can we move forward? Anyone who is still writing? Okay, so moving forward. Right, so have the heading. You don't need to write, the, draw this diagram. This is going to be your heading, basic elements of digital graphics, right? Write that as the heading, the next subheading, basic elements of digital graphics. And under that, put number one and say pixel.
<clears throat> okay, so under the pixel, let's write about these points. Yeah, these three points need to be written. Let me know when you are done, people.
Yes, Lamai, are we done? Okay, one is done. How about others? All right, so moving forward. Uh, yeah, it's better we could have this picture, but we can't draw it uh, on the uh, textbook, right? So uh, it's better you refer it from here. What is a pixel and what is a pixel array and what is a pixel row and pixel column, right? So we'll have the note regarding this. Yeah, it's better we write down these two points in change in the size of original graphic, the size of a pixel is changed. And this particular one as well. When the graphic has a smaller number of pixels, its quality decrease when it is enlarged. Lamai, are we done? Right. Okay, moving forward. Yeah. Write these two sentences. Colors using a graphic are represented by the number of bits per pixel used, the BPP. 
So when the graphics which I use more bits per pixel are higher quality, right? So then we'll uh, write about the equation. Okay, are we done, people? Right, so moving forward. Yes, you can write this particular equation and it's better you uh, highlight it or draw a square around it. Then, uh, yeah, it's better you write the uh, example as well, only this part.
la mic abidan The mic. Are we done? The mic. Are we done? Are we Right. Anyone who is still writing? <clears throat> All right. So moving forward. Right. So let's talk about the resolution. Now you know what is what they mean. I mean about the uh, or what they uh, introduce as a pixel, All right? Now we are going to talk about the resolutions. Right, people, sorry for that. So resolution is talking about how many pixels you got on a particular picture in the in vertically and a horizontally. 
right so as it uh, given in the example here they say it has 175 pixels vertically and 250 pixels horizontally right so when those pixels the vertical amount is multiplied by the uh, horizontal amount will give you the resolution right like when we are trying to uh, <clears throat> introduce the resolution of a particular uh, picture we are not going to tell this uh, the answer of the uh, or like the uh, the particular value that you are getting from the multiplication we are just uh, indicating it like this 250 by 175 this should be 175 they have missed the one right so like uh, that indicates first the vertical or the width uh, in pixel and then the height in pixel <coughs> right so that is how we are going to uh, introduce how the resolution works right so here as the as the as the last paragraph says to determine the quality of a graphic the number of pixels per inch used or horizontal it, it is been horizontally or vertically or the number of dots per inch used horizontally or vertically as considered right so and always remember they are going to talk about like how much of pixels are there in a square inch right so like uh, when you got a lot of pixels in this picture if it means this is a square inch that you can find so that is how you are going to tell how the resolution is going to be All right <coughs> excuse me All right so when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the resolution they use two particular uh, units one is pixels per inch ppi right or dots per inch dpi right so that is how you are going to introduce the resolution of a particular picture right so as they illustrated over here this is one dpi one dots per inch so if you, if you think about uh, <clears throat> this particular square has one inch height and one inch width so you can find only one dot inside this right so this is two dpis two dots per inch right that means two dots vertically two dots horizontally right this is horizontally this is vertically right this is five dots per inch right you can see like four are there five dots are there right and you can see when the dots per inch are being increased your quality of the picture is being increased right so this is 300 dots per inch so we can't even see how the dots have been arranged even in here we can't see the specific dots so when it is 25 dpi we can merely see the dots some dots are there it, it is when it is 10 dpi the dots are rather visible right so the number of dots inside an inch or like a square inch will give you a more quality a picture when it comes to the uh, more dots that you can find inside an inch right so earlier we talked about <coughs> number of bits that can be used inside a pixel will increase the quality of the image the second point that you can consider about the quality is the resolution Right. If the resolution is high, that means again picture quality is high. Right. So now two factors are there. 
for you to understand when you need to increase the quality of a particular picture. Got it, people? Is that clear? Yes, everyone? Is that clear? Okay, right. Now, when it comes to the colors, uh, it gives you a different uh, approach, right? So as you could see in the previous uh, topic, the very first topic that we, when we are talking about the pixels, we talk about the number of bits, when number of bits are being increased inside a pixel, the colors that you can represent can be vary or can be increased, right? And if you think about the uh, colors that we can recognize to our naked eye, we are talking about there are 16 millions of like, uh, it, it, it's it's uh, 16 million odd numbers of colors that we can see it from our naked eye, right? That is what they can show over here, right? And these colors, can be represented in two different models, right? We uh, name them as RGB model and the CMYK model. RGB stands for red, green, blue model, right? So using red, green, blue, mixing up those things for a, a particular amount will give you a particular color. And the other one is CMYK model. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. K indicates the blank, right? So it says, it again tells us a way that we can uh, create a color using those four colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So according to the portions that we are going to mix up with the uh, uh, those colors, we'll create a particular color, right? So two particular models, RGB model, and CMYK model. And this will be very much important for you when you are like printing and editing the uh, documents. Like if your printer is using CMYK models, it's going to print according to the CMYK colors. And if you create a document using RGB or create an image using RGB color mod, the printout that you are going to receive from a CMYK printer is different. There will be slightly differences regarding the colors. Right, and when that matters, you have to be very careful. Right, you have to go through what kind of a, a printing preference are there in your printer, and according to that, you have to choose whether you are going to use the RGB colors or the CMYK colors. Right, that will be an important thing for you to understand. Right, so. Uh, this shows you how a tertiary color is uh, made out of RGB colors, right? Red, green, blue colors. So uh, as an example, they have taken uh, three particular uh, uh, things, right? So these RGB values can be given from zero to 255. That is the range that we can use. So zero means no, no color regarding that particular one. 255 means the highest color, like, like all the colors are there. All the colors means like the, uh, the best of it color is there. That means R0 means no red. R255 means R red is red in maximum are being given. So R100 means uh, like right? likewise. Right, so uh, they have given it like this, or else this is the way that it is being represented. Now here, red is there as 245, green is there as 102, blue is there as 36. Or else you can represent that particular decimal value in as a hexadecimal one, right? F5 and 66 and 24. Right, likewise. So uh, 
uh, it is a hexadecimal representation. Anyhow, it's going to be in this range from zero to 255. Right, okay, before I come to the graphic size and compression, let's write about the colors and the uh, resolution, right? Okay, have the heading resolution. Yeah, you have to write it like this, physical dimension of a digital graphic is displayed as the image resolution. That is going to be your first line, these two lines together, physical dimension of a digital graphic is displayed as the image resolution. then you can write this line. So here they are talking about the uh, resolution. Here they are talking about the quality of the graphic, right? Resolution is always, it's going to be how many pixels are there vertically, how many pixels are there horizontally, right? And uh, this PPI, pixel per inch or dots per inch, will determine the quality of the graphic, right? So this is the first line, and this is going to be your second line.
Okay, people, are we done? Yes, people, anyone who is still writing? Okay, moving forward. But the fourth element is the color. Fourth or third, let me see the solution. It's a third element, right? Third element, color. <coughs> Right, so you can write this as the first point. Then you have to draw the uh, this diagram, right? So as well as you have to write this model as well. So below CMYK is there, that also be written. So start it from here, right? So under the heading color, the number three, you can continue from this point.
people are moving upward. So you can write the CMYK model as well. Yes, people, are we done? Yes, everyone, anyone who is still writing? <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> Sorry. so I'm moving forward. Yes, so you can write this as the last point, right? To make tertiary, tertiary color, the color combination should be from this particular 000 to 255, 255, 255. So the way that they have uh, talking about is, it is as a RGB triplet, right? So you better mention that particular thing.
Okay, people, are we done? Anyone who is still writing? All right, so moving forward. So this is what you call the graphic size and the compression mod, right? It is another property that we need to uh, take care when, uh, especially when we need to uh, uh, output a particular graphic that we have made, right? So we can use a particular graphic editing software and then we, we have to uh, output our uh, final output, right? So once you have done all the editing parts, when we are saving it, we have to be considered about how this how the graphic size is going to be and what are the compression mods that we can use, right? So uh, like there are two types of compressions, right? Now the graphic size is depending on, uh, on the resolution that a particular graphic is using and the, uh, the nature of the pixel, how many colors that a pixel can uh, contain. Uh, according to those two factors, graphic size is determined as well as the method that you are using for the compression will also determine the size of the graphic, right? So all three factors will be uh, influence or like will be, uh, will be a part, will be a factor to determine the size of the graphic, right? So <clears throat> there are two types of compressions that we can do. The first type is a lossy compression. The other one is the lossless compression, right? So when you are compressing, lossy compression means the size of the graphic, original graphic will be reduced, right? It is, it is the literal meaning of the uh, compressing, right? And when you need to use that graphic again, the quality of the graphic is also being reduced when you are using the lossy compression, right? So if you use a lossy compression, your graphic, the, the capacity will be reduced as well, as well as the quality, right? And when you are doing the lossless compression, <clears throat> the Compression will happen without losing any quality of the graphic. And when you, when you are going to reuse it or when you are going to open or extract it, you can get the original uh, picture as it's been compressed, right? So the lossy compression will help you to compress or reduce the capacity in a bigger manner. When it comes to the lossless compression, it is not that big due to the compression, right? So the, uh, uh, the re reduction of the capacity will be more, will be higher in the lossy compression. Lossless compression, comparatively, it is not that small when it is being compressed, right? And lossy file formats can be considered as these things, JPEG, TIFF, BMP, right? Those kind of things. Lossless compression is given by the GIF, PNG, RAW files, RAW files, right? Those are the uh, extensions that we can find for the uh, lossy compression and the lossless compression, right? So that means if you are extracting a GIF, you are not going to lose the quality of the uh, picture. But if you extract in a JPG, it will definitely reduce some quality, right? And when it comes to the graphic 
types, you are introduced with two particular graphic types, which is the raster graphics and the vector graphics. Uh, okay, okay. But don't uh, point it to your uh, eyes. Yeah, off it and do the picture and when, then, then you can on the right, right? So- But they do have glass pictures. <laughs> Right. <clears throat> Sorry for that, people. So when it comes to the uh, graphics, there are two types of graphics, which is called the raster graphic and the vector graphics, right? So raster and vector has significant differences in between them. Raster graphics means arrays of pixel of different colors, right? So uh, when, when it is a raster graphic, it's actually... Uh, uh, less quality type of graphics. When it comes to the vector graphic, we call it the high quality of graphics, right? So like uh, when it comes to the raster graphics, it does not contain a lot of records regarding the picture. It's just the pixels and what are the colors of it. And when it comes to the vector graphic, it uh, maintains some particular records. Because of this vector graphic uh, capacity, is bigger than the raster graphic capacity, right? If you take the same picture from as a raster, as a vector, you, you are going to find the vector graphic is going, going to have more capacity than the raster, right? So when it compress, raster graphics will lose the quality, vectors does not, right? And for high quality creations, like uh, for the banners and all these things that you can see on the road, the bigger ones, right? Uh, raster graphics are not good, right? It's the vector graphic that they are following in, right? So uh, raster graphics, again, I told you it is less in capacity. That means it's used less memory capacity. Right and raster vector graphic, it needs a bigger memory capacity. Right, so if you are taking the pictures from a DSLR and all these things, it captures the vector type. Right, and uh, when you are using these graphics for something, since the capacity is very small, raster graphics does not affects on the speed of the computer, but the vector does. Right. And these are the softwares that we can uh, uh, find or create the rasters and vectors. We can create the raster graphics using Adobe Image Ready, Photoshop, the uh, one that you are going to learn by next week, the GIMP, right? And uh, there are many. And when it comes to the vector graphics, Adobe Illustrator, Lightmotion, Coral Paint Shop, right? Frameworks. Uh, expression design from Microsoft, right? Those kind of things, Coral Draw, right? Those are vector graphic creators, right? So those things will clearly affect on the computer speed. When you are using those softwares, you will you will realize uh, it consumes a lot of memory, a lot of uh, processor speed and all these things uh, to create a graphic through it. But uh, comparing to that, Game, Photoshop, and all these things, they do not consume that much of uh, performance from your computer, right? And here at the bottom, uh, they have shown you what happens when you enlarge a raster graphic and a vector graphic, right? So when raster is enlarged, you can see the pixels clearly and the quality of the picture will be reduced. 
But when you are uh, enlarging the vector graphic, it gives you still it gives you the same topic, right? Yeah. Yes. All right, people. Uh, by next week, I'm going to tell what to be written regarding this, right? Then after we'll go for the we'll go for the uh, practicals. We'll go for the practicals by next week, right? So I'm going to end the session from this point, right? And I'll see you on next week. We can start the physical classes, people, right? And I'll let you know what are the uh, time frame, right? Because I got the news recently, uh, the school days are going to be Sunday, Monday, and uh, not Sunday, actually, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, right? And Thursday and Thursdays and Fridays are going to be uh, uh, holidays, as the government says. So we'll see. So since now the power cut is also been reduced, so we can adjust the time for a, uh, if it is holiday for everyone, we'll adjust the time for the uh, much evening, uh, to a much evening portion, right? I'll let you know how the things are going to happen, right? So thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you next week with the practicals.